All right, you guys get to see my, uh, you know, <laughs> closet with all my shirts and, you know, collect the collector stuff. And I got up, you know, whatever, all my books, and DVDs. Excuse me, I'm feeling really stuffy again today. But this is Bronson's By Any Means Necessary Fantasy Football Talk for Friday, November 5th. This will be my running back spikes. And yikes, but first, um, I just I just had to go edit my first video because apparently I made it private. So my video from hours ago, wide receivers, uh, it's been up for, uh, I don't know, four hours, three hours. And for whatever reason it wasn't showing up, it was pissing me off. But I found out that uh, I accidentally set it to private. So now it's public, so it's up there for consumption if anybody cares to watch it <clears throat> um let's get you up on the movies that i've watched lately for first was uh last night in soho it's i i guess a horror movie uh it wasn't really scary had a, had a nice actually really nice story i actually really liked it that was really well done uh, i was very impressed it's probably one of the best horror movies that i have ever seen and uh i gave it a pretty high rating it's one of the best movies of the year so far. I really liked, I liked everything about it. I liked the actresses. Uh, I liked the story. I liked the, 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 the plot twists. I liked, I just liked it. I, I really enjoyed that movie actually. So I definitely recommend that last night in Soho. Uh, next is A Mouthful of Air starring Amanda Seyfried. Um, apparently that was a book I can't imagine it how exciting the book was to read it was a very slow uh boring movie and uh it's just about a woman who suffers from depression and she you know has children is married has a husband you know seemingly a normal happy life <sighs> but it's anything but apparently uh, I, that was one of the worst movies of the year for me then i watched antlers um that's another horror movie uh, I, I was interested just because it's uh Guillermo de Tor Guillermo del Toro played a part in it um in it, I mean not like acted in it but he had a part in the you know creation and production of it and um it also takes place in in Oregon even though it's like not a real town they made up a town um but it was another um that I actually kind of liked it like it was kind of a dumb story as most horror movies are but um i, I like the way they I, I like the way they did it you, you know you kind of felt sympathetic to some of the characters you i like the scenery it was nice to see the location that they chose and um yeah it wasn't it wasn't terrible definitely wasn't the worst horror movie i've ever seen i've seen a lot of bad ones and then today, I just got back from Eternals, and uh, you know, it's it's Marvel, so it was, it was entertaining, it was connected. Um, I, I was actually thoroughly entertained by the entire movie. Uh, again, another kind of dumb storyline. I don't really understand. The Eternals were kind of, kind of like Captain Marvel. They threw the Eternals in there kind of like willy-nilly. Like, they didn't really have a real part to play in the, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but um, that they did a good casting, and I was I liked it. Uh, obviously, you know it's going to continue. Um, and Marvel's I think Marvel's really going to struggle trying to recapture the magic of uh, you know Phase Three, mostly the Infinity War. Like Infinity War was just they're never going to get anything close to that Infinity War in game, like everything else just kind of afterwards just feels like a letdown and I, there's nothing Marvel can really do about that but the movie's still decent it's nice that they're introducing more diversity introducing more characters uh, that, that a lot of people maybe haven't heard of and uh, I'm, I'm interested to see where this all goes over the course of the next few years and so that's it. I, I recommend all three of those four. 
of A Mouthful of Air was, again, really not great. Not a great movie at all, so there's nothing endearing about it. And, okay. The running backs that I'm, I'm yiking this week, starting up in the top five. All these guys are top 20 guys. You know, guys that are, you know, basically considered must-starts. And I'm just, I'm not saying you shouldn't start them. Uh, I know how running back, how running back's not super deep this year. But I just, you know, should be a little wary of them. Or in some cases, maybe consider other options such as, you know, not this. Okay, Christian McCaffrey is the first one we're going to talk about. He's ranked at three for the week. And, you know, I get it. Christian McCaffrey, even with like five touches, could still have an, an amazing day. He still put up a top 10 week. However, I don't know if it's going to happen. It is, he is going to see Bill Belichick, uh, Bill Belichick's defense, and he, I would imagine Bill Belichick has come up with some schemes to uh, kind of contain Christian McCaffrey, especially a limited Christian McCaffrey. A limited Christian McCaffrey still is a must start. Uh, definitely a flex probably a running back too but having him at, t at top five this week seems awfully ambitious coming off that injury next we're gonna talk about josh jacobs at 11 i have been a fan of josh jacobs for the last couple of years i've been anticipating a breakout year from him and that really hasn't materialized maybe he just really isn't that good he could just be a guy and uh, this could be what he is he doesn't really contribute a lot in the passing game so that kind of limits him in ppr which is pretty standard these days uh ppr scoring and uh you know he's not he's, you know other than getting touchdowns which he, he does kind of accumulate touchdowns at a, at a decently good rate he's, he's just not super productive really i don't know if he's a high-end running back too especially this week um but again I, th I think he's a guy that we're all going to be starting but uh, i would temper my uh, expectations or or hopes for him uh, a top 12 week doesn't seem likely to me next miles gaskin at 16 versus he said i don't i don't understand this fascination with miles gaskin he like last year <laughs> I still didn't get it last year because he wasn't doing anything. But at least last year he was kind of getting work. Um, enough work to make you think, you know, that he could potentially do something. This year he's not even getting the work. He's not producing and he's not getting the work. He's not anywhere near the top 20 running back for me this week. I, Miles Gaskin is really kind of unownable. If you do own him, he's just desperation deep um, depth uh, you shouldn't be playing him I don't, I don't even in a good match against the Texans I just don't see Miles Gaskin doing anything I wouldn't even flex him and Khalil Herbert at 17 against the Steelers now Khalil, Khalil Herbert's another guy who really just I mean he's getting a lot of work uh, he's producing decently with that work so he should still be a flex play um, the possibility of a top 20 week is, is there. I'm not discounting that. But, uh, he, again, he's not, he's not really a guy that's really done much with the opportunity that he's been given. Um, he has, you know, exceeded any reasonable expectations that anybody, any fantasy guys have had. And we've all enjoyed the, the productivity that he has given us because he's house money. Nobody drafted him. He's, he was free on the waiver wire. Uh, but um, David Montgomery potentially could be back this week. I don't know. I don't know why the Bears would bring him back this week before the bye. Uh, they should just wait till after their bye, which is next week. Um, but there could be a split. There could be a committee, at least for this week. I think David Montgomery is still the better running back long term. Because uh, David Montgomery contributes a lot more in the passing game as well. Uh, but Khalil Herbert is a bit of a risky running back, too. For me this week, I've got him more as a high-end flex. Now, for the guys I'm spiking, uh, the guys I like outside the top 20 who could potentially put in top 20 or top 25 flex-worthy weeks, 
James Robinson way down at 27 versus Buffalo. Now, I, I'm as I've said, I am anticipating Buffalo blowing Jacksonville out. But for some reason, I'm really high on all the Jacksonville guys still. Trevor Lawrence, Marvin Jones, James Robinson, Dan Arnold, the tight end. Like, I'm high on all of them. Especially, I mean, with the... James Robinson contributes in the passing game as well. James Robinson is the best offensive um, player Jacksonville has. Urban Meyer has at least figured that part out lately. Uh, so, uh, if James Robinson plays, he's still a top 20 guy for me because of the productivity that we have shown, seen from him for the last year and a half. Um, 27 seems low, even though I, I do understand that he's injured, but it doesn't sound like it's anything serious. It sounds like he's going to play. <sighs> A.J. Dillon of the Packers at 30 against the Chiefs. A.J. Dillon has quietly been, been a very good um, flex play this week because he's getting a lot of he's actually getting a lot of uh, work. Uh, more, I mean, I shouldn't say a lot, but more than any of us really thought he would. And uh, he's 50, It's kind of almost a 50-50 split with Aaron Jones, and he's got a AJ Dillon actually has a higher yards per per uh, touch than Aaron Jones right now. Aaron Jones is the guy getting the touchdowns, which is really helping him. Um, but in a game against the Chiefs, which should be a high scoring affair, even with Jordan Love back there, I think they're going to be more run heavy with Jordan Love though, which means AJ Dillon could see even more work than he's been getting. AJ Dillon at thirty seems low. I've got him top twenty five. Jordan Howard way down at 41 versus the Chargers. Jordan Howard is the guy the Eagles clearly trust this guy on the goal line. Um, if, he, if he can fall into the end zone once or even twice, he could be a decent flex play. So 41 seems pretty low and the chances of him getting the touchdown uh, seem pretty high because that's literally the only thing he's on the roster for. And then 51, David Montgomery if I I don't know. He's actually not at 51. He's outside the top 50. I'm just putting him at 51 because they don't rank, you know, anyone outside the top 50. But if David Montgomery plays, um, even if it's limited, <sighs> okay, maybe I wouldn't flex him. So maybe he's still outside the top 30. Uh, but like he should at least be ranked this week, right? We've seen David Montgomery be pretty productive. I mean, he looked like a bust his first couple of years for sure. But last year he really came on. And this year before he got hurt, he wasn't looking, he was, he was looking, he was looking okay. Uh, you know, nothing, nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to, you know, be disappointed about with David Montgomery. So if he plays, um, I think he's definitely the better, uh, the better pass catcher and he's definitely better on, in the red zone. So David Montgomery could see some catches, which will raises PPR score and he can see some touchdowns uh, or two you know at least one touchdown or something so again he could be a decent flex play I would put you know I might put him at like 30 30 years I don't know low end flex play desperation flex play but um, you know if you got him let's say you got like Derrick Henry David Montgomery um Clyde Edwards Hilaire, Christian McCaffrey. Well, you're probably not gonna have Henry and McCaffrey. But let's say you got a bunch of injured running backs, right? Uh Kareem Hunt. So let's say you got Derrick Henry, David Montgomery, Clyde Edwards Hilaire, Kareem Hunt. Pretty bad luck, right? So you probably kinda need you kinda stuck playing David Montgomery this week if he plays. And uh, you know, that may not be the worst the worst the worst thing. So maybe your luck is finally starting to change in that scenario. So yeah, that's that's my running backs, spikes, and yikes. Now I don't have to worry about doing this video tomorrow, even though I may just wait till tomorrow to upload it. Um, yeah, tomorrow's gonna be a busy day. Although I did get asked, because uh, I'm high enough on the seniority list, I did get asked if I want to move to Saturday mornings and I said no again because I, I like now the summer's over Saturday night's not so bad it's not so hot it's not so disgusting it's not so gross I don't have to bring three shirts a night and change them I don't sweat my butt off the whole time and because I got high seniority I kind of get to do what I want I don't have to you know if I don't want to go uh, get stuck let's say um, loading scanning and loading 
uh, a door by myself. I don't have to do that anymore. I, I can kind of, you know, be a floater, be a rover, which is something I've always enjoyed in every job. I like being able to just go help out uh, where I'm needed and not get stuck in one place all night. Um, and uh, I, I kind of just get to sort like I do in the mornings anyway. So it's kind of nice to be at, at the top of the seniority list on Saturday night because if I go to Saturday morning, I'll be back at the bottom. I'll have to unload all these hours, which is another thing. Like, I like making money. If I'm good, I like my shift to be, you know, worth it. So, um, yeah, I said no, but uh, I'm thinking, you know, with my schedule changing, where I'm going to start getting, you know, Sunday, Monday off, it might be nice to just do, just get Saturday shift out of the way. And then I still have my Saturday night uh, and Sunday, Monday to enjoy my time off. You know, it'll make it, again, make it traveling a lot easier because uh, then I can catch a, you know, a, a Saturday night flight somewhere and spend Saturday, Sunday, Monday there instead of having to wait till Sunday morning, you know. Um, so I may, if they ask again, which they will because I'm at the top of the list, right? So every time there's an opening on the, the morning shift, I will be the first person they ask. Uh, I might say yes next time. Um for now I'm going to stay on the night shift so that means tomorrow I also just I wanted to sleep in tomorrow I didn't want to I didn't want to go in as, I didn't want to get up at 5 in the morning tomorrow I'm, I, I get up at 4 3 45 4 a.m. Uh, four days a week and uh, so you know Saturdays is my night is my day to sleep in and I wanted to do that tomorrow so yeah um, alright well I'm at 17 minutes now so I'm going to and this piece, love and not show fries. Thanks for watching.